Hello and welcome back to another character creation video. My name is Lumen and today, The Waylanders. This is a classic RPG. It just released out of early access on the 2nd of February, 2022. And hey, it's got a character creation system. We're going to jump in right now. We're going to check it out and we hopefully going to have a good time doing so. Let's go. Difficulty obviously doesn't matter too much. Peasant, Pilgrim, Explorer, Waylander, and Nightmare. You know what? Let's go Nightmare. Let's go Nightmare. For character creation purposes, let's feel a little hardcore. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, I'm liking that. Alright. Body type. Male and female. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to decide if there's nudity in this character creator or not. I, I, I was sitting here for like five minutes earlier trying to decide if this should be considered nudity. I don't know, man. We'll zoom in in a moment, okay? Just reserve judgment. Male and female. Here we go. Then you get to pick your race. Uh, we're going to have a look at all those in a moment. Class and background. The backgrounds are, as you can see here, when I, when I like scroll through here, they are sort of locked to certain races and classes. So it's, it's like, it's a little weird the way you pick them because you can't just like, you know, pick the one you want on whichever because obviously certain classes and certain races can't have certain backgrounds. It makes sense. Uh, so, so like that's sort of more something you're given. More so than, you know, something that you pick straight out. Then, after you pick your origins here, you can customize, you can do your stats, and you do your identity. Uh, it's it's kind of weird, you know, the, the order we're going to be doing things in. I, th I think the best way is probably just to go boom, 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 you know, from start to finish. Uh, we, we might have to, like, you know, jump back a little bit in case certain races maybe have different stats or something like that so keep that in mind as we go through here but for now we're gonna start with male we're gonna have a look at the races the classes and the backgrounds first that's it let's do it let's do it so i'm most interested in the in the races and i'm gonna like read the descriptions and stuff because it's it's interesting you know and it's a classic rpg so if you're looking at a character creator or a character creation system for a classic rpg this is the kind of stuff that matters probably even more so than the visual Customization, this is what matters. The actual law and the reason behind picking a, a certain race or a class. So we're going to start, again, like I said, male. It doesn't really matter because, you know, we're not really picking that just yet. And it looks like, you know, male and female, same, same. You know, they're not going to limit you here. There aren't certain races that are just male or just female. Anyway, let's do this. Human. Human is the most common and diverse race in Brigantia. The Celts are the main human race represented in the Waylanders, but as the seat of the thriving empire with trade routes that extend well beyond the continent of Europe, Brigantia has always been home to people of many different beliefs, nationalities, races, and ethnicities. They have mostly water trait, increased resistance to water damage. <laughs> I mean, that's actually kind of true. Yeah, I mean, I am mostly water. That's, yeah, straight facts. Mostly water. Uh, this guy doesn't look much like a werewolf. Okay, descendant from the god Lug, werewolves do not transform <laughs> humans with a bite or change shape with the phases of the moon. Some appear almost human with lupine characteristics. Some are indistinguishable from wolves, but with human intelligence. The majority, however, are fearsome half-human beasts, ferocious in battle and dangerous foes. Their traits are thick pelt, increased resistant to wind damage. Okay. I mean, this doesn't really look much like him. He's got like some hair on his shoulder there. He's got some more hair on his chest, but it doesn't really look like a weird. Maybe they have like a an ability they can use. Like I see that they have a background specifically there. If I like pick it, there's a background here. Hmm. I, I yeah. I don't know. I guess we'll check it out when we get to the to the backgrounds. We'll check it out. Morian. That might be Morian. They're an immortal race with dark skin, golden eyes. And a penchant for both fate-based magics and intellectual pursuits. After centuries of living among humans and other surface dwellers, most Morians have grown tired of mortal affairs and have developed thriving communities of their own in the underworld and the medulas. Okay, they carved from the rock, increased resistance to earth damage. I, I think that's kind of cool. I'm, I'm guessing the last one's going to have increased resistance to, like, what, fire damage? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's kind of cool that they split those up equally between them. Next. Semi-Fomorian. 
The Fomorians are a race of monstrous immortal giants who once ruled Ireland. What? <laughs> when the, wait, are this is real? Okay. When the Tuatha came to power, they banished the Fomorians to a small corner of the Morian underworld. The Fomorians have been in exile for thousands of years. Bide in their time until they have the opportunity to retake their ancestral home. Half Fomorians are the offspring of these titans. Less monstrous in appearance, but just as fearsome. They forged in flame. Increased resistance to fire damage. Cool. Cool. Okay. Now, I think every race can be every class, but we're going to just... We'll have a look and make sure anyway. First up, classes. Warrior. Strong and reckless. Warriors inflict devastating damage with two heavy weapons. Shun in defense. They are merciless at close range. Cutting down their enemies or flinging them across the battlefield. Their features are dual wielding, heavy weapons, short range, and melee. And we have the Guardian. Selfless defender and champion. Guardians shield their friends in battle, fighting on the front lines with a sword and shield. They draw the attention of the enemies, exposing their vulnerable flanks. Their features are shield, heavy weapons, tank, and melee. These are the tanks. I mean, you can sort of, you can sort of guess that, right? <laughs> rogue. Clever rogues are masters of trickery, evasion, and assassination. They weaken and confuse their foes before finishing them off with lethal close-range attacks. Features are daggers, damage over time, trickery, evasion, and critical damage. Then we have the ranger. Aha, yes. Rangers are lethal sharpshooters with loyal animal companions. Rangers excel at long-range combat, using their bow to inflict critical damage on foes. Hidden weaknesses. Long-range weapons, pets, critical damage. Okay. Sorcerer. Mysterious and powerful, sorcerers wreak magical havoc across the battlefield. Reality is a sorcerer's plaything, and they can bend it to teleport in and out of battle at will. Okay. I mean, teleportation is just one of their main features. That's sick. Destruction magic, area spells, and teleportation. Finally, the healer. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, that's like pretty cut and dry right there, isn't it? Healers call upon the spirits of the earth to heal and strengthen their allies or weaken their foes. The healer is the beating heart of any party. Healing buffs and debuffs. So... I find it very interesting just the way that they set this up because it is pretty much as straightforward as you can get. Like it's a straight warrior, guardian, rogue, ranger, sorcerer, healer. Like they don't they don't fluff the words up or the names up. I think that's kind of cool. It can definitely work out because who needs fluff, man? You just want what you want. Anyway, that's the classes. Let's see if we can look at the backgrounds now. It's like a little difficult to like, yeah, I don't know. We're going to start with this, okay? Celtic soldier. I can't like, I can't look at it without actually finding something that can be it. You've been training in the ways of combat since you came of age. You grew up in the Celtic culture and faith, but spent your early adulthood traveling around the world as a mercenary. During that time, you learned of other cultures and fighting styles, making you an essential asset in negotiations and on the battlefield. You're now an honored, decorated member of the King Ith's personal guard. You're sharp, strong, and tough, but you have little interest in diplomacy and politics beyond the kinds that lead to violence. Okay. Okay. Let's see if we can get the next one now. So, I'll, I'll see if I can, like, find a class. There we go. These two. Celtic Druid. As a Celtic Druid, you're deeply ensconced in the Celtic culture. Born with natural aptitude for magic, you were sent to the Druidic Circle in Dumbriga as a child to develop your skills. The other druids at the circle are your main family and cultural touchstones. And the trees, stones, birds, and the sea are as alive and important to you as people. You've become respected as a valued scholar, known for your ability to wield the natural elements. But your devotion to the Celtic faith means that your understanding of other cultures and religions is severely lacking. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, so it's not just boons all around. Then we can go back to Warrior and we can check this one out. Dogs of Ares Mercenary as a teenager. Prince Lugade of Brigantia. That's the name, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Every time I have to do like a double take to make sure I'm getting the names right. Was sent to Saivia to study the advanced combat tactics. You were his instructor. Whoa, really? Okay. I thought it would be the other way around. As a mercenary from the famous Temp Dogs of Ares <laughs> company. Okay, I mean, sure. Temp Dogs of Ares, I see. That's their, that's their clan tag, guys. Okay, come on. Come on, it's the clan. You... You believe strongly in the glory of the battlefield <laughs> and are one of the best skirmishes in the world. You specialize in the Greek spear and shield fighting style as well as the bow. But no little of Celtic culture and society. This is your first time ever visiting Brigantia and you may find their ways rather odd and difficult to understand compared to your own. It doesn't bother you much. In your experience, most pe people and problems can be solved with close observation and when necessary a little bloodshed. 
Okay, okay, okay. Let's see if we can get that one now. It's going to be a interesting search. Uh, what? <laughs> Did they have to be females, maybe? I'm trying to I'm trying to get that one selected. Like there must be a combination here. Is there no combination here that would lead to me being able to pick that background? This one right here? This is kind of odd. Yeah, there's nothing. Huh. Okay. That one, that one is, that one's just not playable right now, I guess. I, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just giving you the authentic experience here. Like, I, I don't know how to find it. Uh, I, I, I now saw the other ones, but... That one specifically is just not there. Like, I, we can get this, 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 and this. This one specifically I just can't get. I, I don't know what it is. Like, my guess would be, like, healer, and then one of these races. Like, it would just go... It would just go over there. Because it looks like a... Su oh, there we go. There we go. I got it. Oh! Holy crap, how did I do that? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, did it flick around there? Like, did I see it before? Anyway. Egyptian. Since the beginning of time, Brigantia has been deeply connected to Egypt. I knew it would be one of the healers or casters or something. It just looked right. The two societies have traded goods and cultures for as long as anyone can remember. Many Egyptians reside in Brigantia. Queen Escota herself was born in Egypt and openly follows Egyptian religion. A few years ago, the queen's son, Prince Lugaid, met you in Egypt and offered you a position in his entourage. You've been traveling with him ever since as a trusted advisor and friend. Far from home, you have not yet decided whether you'll follow the Egyptian religion of your ancestors who accept the Celtic religion and way of life as your own. You aren't as strong or battle-hardened as your royal friend, but you are quick, intelligent, and curious. In other words, everything an advisor needs to be. Yes! I found it. <laughs> I w dude, it would have bothered me. I would have taken that regret to my grave. I'm not even joking. That's me. Guys, that's me in a nutshell. It would have bothered me. Till the end of days. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say this right now. I think, and I might be wrong, but I think that this uh, character creator is a little buggy. I think it, I think it might not be updating. Yeah, I, like, I, like, I, okay. I'm, I'm like almost certain it's a little buggy. Yeah, yeah, look, look, look. Okay, okay, I see, I see, I see. It's it's just the, the presentation is a little weird. So, so let's see if we can go back here. I'm trying to find that scroll now. <laughs> yeah, it's the two casters that can be that last one there. Okay, werewolves, can they be the little scroll? These guys can only be the chest. I, just, I had the scroll. I know it's th there. There, it's these guys. These guys can be the scroll. I think it's these guys. It's probably the the casters here. I swear, I just had it. It was there. I did see it. Okay, well, what we'll do is, I'm gonna re I'm gonna do the next one, and then I'm gonna go back when I do it, like, cause I'm gonna find it, you know. I I will find it. This is the this is the way to do it. Here we go. This is the way you do it. This is the way you do it. Here we go. I found it. This is how you do it. Interesting, interesting. Okay, let's just do this one. Murian Protector. Your long life has been spent protecting Murian leaders and diplomats, and you are proud to say that none of your charges have ever died, at least while you were watching them. This time, you have the highest honor of all, protecting the legendary seer, leader and sacred guide of your people. You hope to finally visit the great capital of the underworld upon your return. Your focus of, on protection has left you slower and less agile than you prefer, but you can take a punch like few others. Okay. 
that's kind of sick. So more f more for tanking and and I suppose support purposes than than most others. Uh, that scroll seems to me to be like again like a a more learned like if I had to guess I'd say it's like either Murian or or, uh, or maybe one of the casters and like. Once again, I, I I just I get the feeling this whole system is a little bit buggy, okay? Because I had it I had it earlier. I know it was lit up earlier. Let's look at the chest. Alpha Wolf, leader of a powerful pack of merchants and traders. This will be your first journey out of your family's lands, and you hope to meet your ancestor Lug. Werewolves don't prize the same qualities as other races do. You aren't as strong, tough, or smart as your pack mates, but your speed is second to none. Okay, then these guys have this slave. You grew up as a slave in the Morian underground. With little knowledge of the outside world. You look human enough to most people, if a little tall. As a mercenary of the Murians, you've fought on their side in various conflicts throughout your life. You arrive in Brigantia as their bodyguard, but also as a warning. Your masters remember what the Tuatha did. Your Formian blood has given you strength, durability, and a tireless will. You tend to focus on what's before you, to the exclusion of all else. Cool. I, I like the backgrounds. Now, now, like, they don't give you numbers here, right? I, I don't know if it's a lore background choice that you're making, or if it's something else, like if you have more attached to it, uh, if you're getting stats with it. I'm assuming you do, because that would just make sense, right? Uh, maybe only females can be that scroll. Because, you know, it's, it's again, like, it's a classic RPG. You, know, you want, you want your, your choices, even in the character creator, to matter. So I would be perfectly happy if they, if they were... If they went either way with it, but I'd obviously be a little bit more happy uh, if we got, if we got like, you know, there, there it is, there it is. Okay. Murian diplomat. Your elders have been grooming you for Murian leadership since a young age. Studies and travel consumed your early adulthood, and you spent the last few weeks traveling with the Celts, learning about the world and teaching them about yours. This particular trip will be the first time you meet the Murian seer, and you hope to make a good impression on her. You have a great deal of experience winning debates and are knowledgeable about cultures beside your own, but your devotion to intellectual pursuits have left you weaker, more frail than your famously sturdy people. Yes, we got them all. That is great success. Okay, okay, okay. I'm pausing the video right there. I'm going to mention something that I realized while making the thumbnail. After I recorded the video, I didn't realize this while I was actually looking at the characters. I'm not sure how I didn't realize it, but, you know, I, I didn't. I didn't. Your character's physique and the face, it all changes slightly based on the class you pick. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty massive thing and I didn't realize it at the time. And I want to just sort of, you know, shove this in right here. And then you can go on watching the video and, and pretend like I know what I'm talking about. But you can go on doing that with this knowledge. With the knowledge that you can not change the way your character looks a little bit. Let me show you some examples. So when you're on the two, let's say, strength-based classes, then you are slightly bigger. More muscle mass, slightly larger frame. Face is also slightly bigger, you know, more more square looking. Then when you switch to the rogi or dexterity or agility based classes, you can see that the build gets slightly smaller, the face gets a little thinner, and your character's visual style overall just changes a little bit. And finally, on the intelligence based classes, you can see that the build changes a little bit more. It's not a lot. But, like, it, it loses some of the muscle mass, basically. And I think the posture changes very slightly. Uh, the face itself, you can see, it, I think it sort of gets a little longer or something. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm going crazy. Maybe those two are exactly the same. But what I'm trying to point out here is that you do get a little bit more flexibility by just picking a different class, I guess. And it's the same for all of them, as you can see over here. This one, I'm not sure how I didn't even realize this. But it's the same for all of them. They all have different bodies. Uh, you can see there, uh, this actually sort of highlights what I was trying to say uh, on the other one with all the clothes on. But it's a little skinnier. Like I said, slightly less muscle mass. It's, it's kind of a nice thing for them to do, I suppose. But at the end of the day, it would have probably been better if they gave you that as an actual customization option. If it wasn't locked to certain choices that you make. It's the same for the males, by the way. So it's something that, once again, while it, it's not like a deal breaker or a game changer in any real massively meaningful way, it, it is there and it does make a bit of a difference. Uh, maybe more impactful on the males, actually. And it's it's sort of, it's there on all of them. Uh, you'll see on these guys, the face actually changes quite a bit. Especially there. Wow. Yeah. The, the physique also changes quite a bit there between the 
the cost and the agility type. And finally, semi Fomorians. Big change here. They get they get quite a lot less bulky. And even bigger change there. The arms get like I would I would say skinny at this point. So yeah, uh, that's just an extra little bit that I that I realized while making the thumbnail uh, because I was busy staring at uh, these characters in their frames and I didn't f somehow I didn't register that that and that were not the same, you know, these two. So there you go. Car carry on watching. Pretend like I know what I'm talking about. We're gonna start right now with the males, all of them, and. Uh, well, we could go male, female, male, female, male, female. I mean, that's sort of... I, I usually tend to, generally tend to choose, like, on the fly because it depends on what the customization options are. But we're going to start with male and human right now, and we're going to see how the customization options treat us. I kind of like how the characters look already. I think that there's a decent amount of, let's just say, detail for something like a classic RPG that's usually top-down. Uh, you can toggle the helmet here, but it, it doesn't always work. Maybe it's because I don't have a helmet on. It's It's usually just a little bit of paint on the face. You know, and then you can also randomize the appearance, which we'll do at the end. So we're going to start, however, first with just looking at the hairstyles here. Now, I can't turn. Yeah, I can't turn. Nice. That's a lot of hair. Okay, so they got some short styles and they got some long styles. Uh, they do, however, funnel you into a certain type of look with your hair and well, everything else. Let's take this one and see. Sort of matches the beard a little bit. Hair color. Definitely funnel you with the hair colors too. Let's go for a blonde. Because why not? Facial hairstyle. Uh, these ones are not available. I. Mm, yeah, these ones are just not available. So you have three different beards. I, I, don't, I don't know if this is correct. I'm going to switch quickly and then go back. Just want to make sure it's not bugging out on me. Yeah, okay, they're just not available. You have three different beards here. That's cool, I guess. Facial hair color. We'll make it blonde as well, just like this one. There you go. I had that hairstyle, right? I think that looks kind of cool. Skin tone. It's, it's light, darker, slightly pinker, even darker. And I'm, I'm not sure if that's like maybe a, a yellower tone or something. It's a, it's a warm tone. It's a warm tone. And then eye color. Finally, you get to choose the eye color. Not massively impactful, but I do think you get to see your character up close and personal. Uh, it's sort of, it's something that uh, that definitely happens. You know, you do you do get to see your character zoomed in. I think there are cutscenes and stuff with, with stuff like that. Uh, you don't s seem to be able to change the tattoos here, which again leads me to believe, like I mentioned before, it's part of the armor. Because when you press the helmet button, sometimes <laughs> it uh, it displays your your tattoo on your face, which I think is sort of part of the armor as well. Anyway, that's it. That's it. Let's just look at female as well. Let's do it like this: male, female, male, female. Okay. Oh, her her face tattoo is on. Oh, okay. He just didn't have one. There you go. All right. So hairstyles. Nice. Let's check this one out. Ooh, dude. That's full. That's luscious, dude. These are... Wow. Yeah. They don't mess around, man. These humans are into their hair care. Oh, or they're just good stock. I think it might just be good stock. Okay. Cool. I'm, I'm gonna go with... I kind of like that one. I don't know. I like the little fringe at the front here. Hair color. Is that darker? No, it's exactly the same as the male one, right? It's like you got the, the, I guess what you could call the black. Then you got the brown, the red, the lighter brown, and then the yellow, which is the blonde. I'll take the black here, here. Skin tone. Same, same. I'm curious about the other races now. And then eye colors. Let's take a darker skin color here. Uh, yeah. No, no, no beards here. Okay, <laughs> no, no beards on the on the human females, unfortunately. Okay, werewolf. Next up, start with male. Let's do this. Helmet, face paint. Cool. Okay, I dig it. I like it. Hairstyles. Let's start with that. Uh, oh, I see. They've got like a weird texture on their skin. 
I mean, that texture that I feel like is weird. It could just be their skin. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Slightly more hairstyles here, I guess. What is that? What is this? Is this stubble? That's really strange. What is that on his head? It's like someone smeared mud all over it. Okay, and we got a mohawk here. That looks kind of cool. Yeah, I don't know why, but I like the hair textures in this game. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, dude. They're werewolves. If they didn't put the Wolverine hairstyle in, come on, man. Come on. That would be sacrilege. So, okay. Obviously, we're taking this one. Like, there's no real choice. And we're going to have to go for, like, the mutton chops, right? Um, I must tell you, the mutton chop game is not all that strong here. Like, there they are. But, like, they look... Yeah, they're part of the face. They're always there. So, I think you'd rather go for, like, a big beard. Like this one. Yeah, dude. And it doesn't seem... Like, you can actually change the hair color. It sort of changes with your skin tone. Uh, you, you you pick in what I what I guess could be considered your fur color with your skin tone here. That's cool. I mean, there are some unique options here. I personally would have liked a blacker black, you know? But, but it's all, you know, it's all good. This is fine. This is all right. Eye color. Slightly more impactful than the human ones. But not too much. Okay, females. Oh! <laughs> just realized they got beards too. I mean, it's not a beard. It's, just, it's not a beard, okay? It's not a beard. It's, it's, just, it's just some sideburns. It's not unusual if you're a wolf. I mean, she's got some hair on her shoulders. She's got some hair here, you know, between the bosom. <laughs> There's hair everywhere, man. They're werewolves. They're werewolves. And I actually think, honestly, like, I like the face. So you don't get to, like, customize your face. Uh, but but I like... Oh, I, don't, I like that hairstyle, too. Okay. Like, uh, no jokes. I might even... If I if I have to play this, I might even make a werewolf. Just because I, I kind of like... I kind of like this. I don't know. This hairstyle does it for me. And, and, I mean, like, come on. I don't mind me some hair on the ladies. This is cool. This is cool. I like it. The eyes are nice and big. I like how much color you get to see. Yeah, it's sick. Okay. It's not a lot of... Uh, like, even the, the, the big classic RPGs that released recently, like, I mean, Pillars of Eternity, uh, Pathfinder Kingmaker, and Wrath of the Righteous, and uh, the other one, <laughs> the other big one, they have slightly more... I mean, geez, don't, don't even get me started on Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate 3 is, like, insane. But, but again, uh, this is slightly more on the indie side, and, yeah... It's, it's got a decent amount of options, as far as I can tell. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, Murian. Let's go. Yeah, this is sick. This is, like, really sick. Helmet? Oh, cool! Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. What do we got here? What do we got? Alright. Hairstyle. Is, there's that again. I think it's supposed to be stubble. Lots of very similar hairstyles. I mean, I guess this is all, like, Celtic-inspired stuff. You guys, you guys read the descriptions with me. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, cool, dude. The colors are nice here. Oh, man. I dig that you can do this. You can make your guy look like he's all made of stone. I mean, they, they are. They are. Like, I mean, but you can make it look like that. That's huge. Huge. Okay, facial hairstyles. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I said I'd, I said I'd play a werewolf. I, t I take that back. This is, make this is way cooler. Oh my god, you can make him baby-faced as well. Check it out. <laughs> oh no. No, no, I, 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 honestly, like, I really like the beard. I like I like the beard that looks like it's made of stone. The hair looks like it's made of stone. All of it looks like it's made of stone. It's really cool. Yeah, that's sick. Okay, facial hair color, same as the uh, actual hair color skin tone. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I would again, like I said, I, I I'd sort of play and play into and lean into this whole thing of making them look like they're made of stone. Oh, dude, look at the patterns change. That is sick. Kind of wish I could zoom in further and look at them up close and personal. Yeah, man. I'd have it like match the match the tattoos, match the golden inlays. That's nice. Uh, that's really nice. I I like how these guys look. I'm I'm curious about the females now. Let's go to the female. Marian female. Let's do this. Okay. Okay. Very similar to the males, obviously. Because why wouldn't they be? They have a well-formed body. 
I like that hairstyle. I'd probably go with that. Uh, I like this one too. I like I like this one the most though. Uh, wait, let's see. Yeah, I like this one. I like this one. So hair color. Can we can we do the same as on the male? Less so, right? It's it's less. Uh, it's a bit less. I like white. That looks nice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Calling it. This is probably how I'd make myself look if I had to make a character. Or oh, this. This is like you you sort of getting like drow vibes here, but not. Because because I mean, you're looking sort of holier. Uh, more blessed instead of cursed <laughs> it's it's uh you know that's that's cool i like this i like this a lot eye color same as the males yeah same as the males a pity that there are slightly less options here but uh, it's understandable i like it they look cool kind of sick All right last ones here we go male semi femorian Customize. Whoa, these guys have a lot. Okay. Looks like they have like barky skin or something. These are the half giants. They are pretty big. That's a fact. Hairstyles is pretty standard. Like I must say across the board the hairstyles are not that inspired. Uh, but again, you don't really need that much I suppose. Hair color. But I mean I'm here to to talk about and look at the character creation and customization so you know generally in many situations i tend to think that more is better but sometimes you have to admit that more is not always necessary there's a difference right there's a difference interesting face like like what is the what is the, the significance behind this looks like they were chokered or whatever you call it when they cut the you know Slave? Is that some sort of slave branding or something? I, I really, really can't state how much I dislike this facial hairstyle. I, I, I don't think it's possible for me to express in words how much I hate this. I'm just... <laughs> oh no. That's kind of sick. Okay, I like this. There you go. There you go. Skin tone. Let's see what we can get here. Redder. Even, even redder. Even, even redder. And then like a, a pale orc color. And then a lighter color. Yeah, let's just go. They want to be red. These guys want to be red. I can tell. Eye colors. Straightforward. Standard. Okay. That's interesting. They, I mean, they look different. Yeah. Shit, they look different. Okay, females. Kind of reminds me of the Mortal Online characters we made recently in Mortal Online 2. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a cool hairstyle. Different, right? Like I said, I, I I sort of appreciate it when they sort of step outside the box of the norm with hairstyles and do some stuff that's like, you know, that's not often seen. Like this, for instance. I'm not going to say this is the best hairstyle ever created or whatever, but, um, oh yeah, I forgot to do this. There you go. But it's kind of cool. Uh, this is sort of a temporary, unimportant, you know, when you when you activate... <laughs> it's, not, it's not loading in. Uh, th this is your helmet, so you can take it off in the game and you can actually have it not display at all. Uh, so, yeah. Hair colors. And you're going to change it. So it's like, it's it's highly unimportant. It's obviously just how you create your character at the start. Skin colors are the same as the males. And the eye colors, obviously, because of that, also the same. Okay. Yeah. Customization options are interesting. Not bad. Not amazing. Not great. You know, not like super inspired or anything, but they're, they're quite okay. They're quite okay. Now we're going to have a look at stats. So I'm just going to pick like basic stuff. I'm going to pick the warrior. I'm going to pick the Celtic soldier. Then we're going to look at what the stats look like. Uh, it, it's again, I think because of, yeah, exactly. Because of the types of classes that we have, like given, given that we have warrior, guardian, rogue, ranger, and sorcerer, and healer here, I, I expected there to be exactly these. Exactly these stats. Okay, this is exactly what I expected. It's strength, constitution, agility, perception, intelligence, and willpower. I actually thought there might even be less than that. So, strength, brute force, immunity, and intimidation increases resilience. Brute force, immunity, and intimidation, and then resilience is 2%. That's the chance of ignoring status effects. This one is pain tolerance, endurance, and bravado increases health points uh, it, it, by 10. Your health your remaining life replenishes outside of combat. Okay. This one is dexterity, coordination, and cunning. Uh, that's your agility. Increases your dodge chance by 3%. Is that per click? I take it per click. 
Okay. Cool. Environmental awareness, problem solving, and conversational insight increases critical chance by 3%. This is the most important stat. When it's conversational insight, it's always going to be a big deal in a classic RPG. So critical hit by 3% is also kind of nice. Analytical thinking and careful assessment increases efficiency abilities by 2%. Efficiency abilities decrease the cost of class resource points needed for abilities. Okay. And then finally, willpower. That's a storm of sheer power, determination, readiness, and tenacity. Increase speed, cooldown by 1%. That's the cooldown of all abilities. Okay. So you can sort of throw this in wherever you want. And it obviously depends on and changes based on the classes you pick uh, and the races you pick. So like if you if you look at... So I've got nine points here. Look, I've got none spent anywhere. These are, these are stuck, but I've got nine to spend. And I'm on human right now, right? So if I if I switch over, I'm just giving you guys the example. Like if I switch over to the semi Fomorians uh, and and I take Guardian as an example, and I go to stats, you can see that it's shifted entirely over to strength and constitution almost. Uh, and then the the perception is like way lower. The intelligence is a bit lower. Agility is a bit lower. It's sort of a, it mixes it around, much like you'd expect a RPG to do. Yeah. So Morians as an example once again, uh, slightly more balanced. Lots of agility, however. And werewolves probably, what is that, even more agility maybe. Also a lot of agility and high perception. Okay, yeah. So so you can once again sort of mix mix and match. You can pick what you want there. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. I like it. I also really like the different types of armor here, man. Wow, it's nice. Okay, then our final tab. I think I need to spend these before. Yeah, please spend your points. Okay. And you, you do, by the way, you have a max. You can only go to like a certain amount on each of these. You can see that bar over there. You can't go higher than that. Identity. Final tab. This is... It's just a basically a recap of everything you've just done in the creator. But then it also allows you to choose your pronoun. He, she, or they. And it allows you to choose your voice. So here at the end, I'm going to give you all the voices that you can sort of pick between i don't know if this is male and female together i don't think that this changes it we're gonna have a look quickly and and again i'm learning as i go here i don't like really spoiling myself with everything before i start recording so let's listen to these quickly and see if they change i'm going to start with the male voices and i'll go on human male and i'm going to check if they're different on the others right so we'll just spend the stats quickly so as i said you can type your name in here it gives you a little recap and then you can choose your pronoun. Doesn't change this. The pronoun is sort of separate. Okay. Based on that, I'm going to assume that you don't pick. Like, it's it's you get male and female with the same. Because there's three female voices and, and two male. This one could be seen as either male or female. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, that doesn't change it. However, if we pick a female here, and we jump into identity... Same. If we pick a werewolf here, and we jump into identity... Exactly the same. I'm just I'm making 100% sure so that we all know <laughs> and so that we're all on the same page where this is concerned. Uh, it seems like that does in fact not change. Alright, so you've you've basically you've seen it all. You've heard it all. That's it. Your character summary over here, it basically just takes what you've picked. Uh, I'll, I'll read you the example and it summarizes it for you. Uh, nice, neat and tidy. Uh, you can screenshot this and post this on the forum as your uh, sort of identifier. It's kind of cool. I like it. You can sort of share your backstory, what you chose to go with, if you want to talk with like-minded people playing this game. It's a cool feature. You're a Murian, an immortal with a gift for fate-based magic and intellectual pursuits. As a rogue, you favor trickery and devastating close-range attacks. Your background as an alpha wolf means you are a swift hunter, but not as strong, tough, or smart as your pack mates. Okay, <laughs> that's not very flattering. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> but there you go, guys. That's it. 
the Waylanders. I, you know, I, I, I could, if I wanted to show you a couple of like random uh, roles, if you'd like to see that. But I, I, after looking at this now, I sort of think to myself, there's not that much you can really do. Uh, it, it's sort of, you know, it, it presents all of itself, everything it is, pretty upfrontly. You know, you get you get a, an idea of everything you can do uh, pretty quick by just looking at the at the options available, and uh, because of that, you're not going to glean much from from randoming and looking at a bunch of different combinations. But here they are, anyway. You guys can let me know what you think about Waylanders, about the cast customization options available to us. You can let me know what you think about the. Uh, the game itself if you actually played it I i'm considering giving it a try just because i love classic rpgs and uh, it, it looked kind of cool i mean i saw these trailers for it like a long time ago it's sort of been in early access for a while uh, and i thought to myself yeah i'll wait till it comes out before i play it but yeah i'd love to hear from you guys what do you think about the customization is it cool does it have enough for you geez these guys really are tall look at that they really are tall does it have enough for you is is there enough to sort of keep you happy would you like more? What would you like to see? Uh, th this kind of input, leaving comments that say stuff like that, it helps. You know, in case the devs maybe open this video and they check it out for themselves. You never know, dude. Sometimes the devs are watching and then they read stuff and they're like, yeah, let's add that. Hey, this is a good suggestion. Let's do it. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Enjoy the video. Share it around with your friends if you'd like to. Give it a like. And check back here soon for more. I appreciate you guys watching. And sharing this experience with me. Most importantly though. Happy creating characters. In Waylanders. Happy that. <laughs>